Hi guys, this is Donkman from Donksweb.com and we're going old school with these videos. We're shooting straight to YouTube, no fancy intros, let's just get started. So, I'm guessing some of you guys have Windows 10 because there's been 27 million installs as of this video. Uh, so, today we're going to be talking about the start menu. This is a quick look at mine, I'll show you how to get it to how I've got it there. But normally, when you go to customize it, you right click the taskbar, go to properties and then there's usually a start menu tab. It's quite funny because it says taskbar and start menu properties but there aren't actually any start menu properties that you can change here so something they've obviously missed there but a lot of the things there have changed and gone into personalize and on the bottom here of start so I've got everything here switched off the most used apps and recently added apps if I really cared that much about them I'd put them down here in my taskbar uh, if you're looking for the Windows 8 feel of course use the start full screen that will take you out of the desktop into the full screen where you have all your live tiles not sure why you'd want to do that but you can I don't use this recently opened items again for the same reasons, I just put it straight into the taskbar. Now, this option at the bottom is especially important. If I go and show you my taskbar again, you'll see I have a bunch of things here that you won't see on a default install. You'll see I don't have those recent and most used apps here, but these are all very important to me and these are things that did appear in the Windows 7 start menu before they brought the start menu back in Windows 10. So click this button and you'll have all the options to turn on uh, to add back into that thing here. Excellent stuff. I don't use the file explorer because everything I really need is either on the desktop or I will pin pretty much whatever I need to into this area here which is the drives and folders. So that's that. What about styling? So head to the colors option in the personalization and you'll see here you can have it automatically pick an accent color, which I have. Not too bothered about it. Uh, show color on start. If I did that, it's going to look really disgustingly horrible. So I don't like it like that. So I take it off and I make it transparent. If I turn that off as well, you have a quick look. It looks a bit like that. I prefer it to be transparent. It does take, I guess, a little bit of resources, but nothing that's been noticeable for me. So that's pretty much it for all of that really. Uh, everything else is pretty much done. You can have it based on your background which is what I've got and that's that. So I have all my modern apps p p fixed at small icon sizes. I've also made a dashboard on the right hand side for all the live tiles. Now some of these are supposed to update but aren't. So for example Flipboard and 9gag usually would update with a live tile. Um, I don't know of many of these live tiles that have been working. I tried to get a clock, a simple clock on here, but wasn't happening. So I've got a calendar, I've got the weather, I've got an alarm. The people app should be updating, the mail does update, we've got news here. Uh, Facebook I've actually turned off from doing the live tile, so I don't have any personal information here. That's a little bit odd, I just noticed. Never mind. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the dashboard. That's my area for anything that's live, that's going to update live. And so I don't have to fixate on it when I'm opening up that start menu. I did forget to tell you that you can actually just resize this as you want, but I'm guessing you guys have already seen this, so you don't really need to know that. But uh, you can have it as big or small as you wish. So these modern apps I've just sort of pinned there. I'm not probably not really going to use them unless I really need to. But you will notice I have mobile apps. Now this is using BlueStack, so I'm guessing you guys should know about this. This is something that's extremely popular. It allows you to run Android apps on your system. Now Windows should eventually be having native support for that, but for the time being, uh, BlueStack actually does offer shortcuts for each of these. Now. If you were to have the app player by BlueStacks closed, this will take a long time to launch the app you want. But as you see down here, I've actually got it running. Uh, so for example, if I open up Kick, which I'm not actually signed into, there we go. It's a nice quick way to get into uh, any Android app that I want to get into. And it's kind of a cross between that mobile and desktop experience. In terms of the drives and folders, really simple. I have the this PC icon down here. I literally just went and pinned each of these. You just basically do pin to start, uh, which we haven't got here because it's obviously already pinned, but uh, you should have that option. And I've just done that. Bear in mind that it will pin it. If you rename your drives, it pins it as when you right clicked it. So for example, before I rename these to Windows 10, it literally just said drive C and drive E. So do remember that. Uh, here we have the system area now remember also that you can drag these wherever you like so I can have it over here if I wanted to uh, using that and you can rename them very simple stuff 
and that's pretty much it. So this system area actually takes some settings. I'm not quite sure why it's not uh, rendering those properly, but for example, Bluetooth, if I click that, it goes straight to the settings for Bluetooth. Now, the way I did that was simply to go into settings. You can pretty much choose anything you want here. For example, I don't actually have Wi-Fi, but you could actually do that there. If I, for example, choose VPN and right click, you can just click pin to start and it'll add it to your start menu. And that's pretty much it. I've also pinned the control panel. I actually find the control panel a lot easier to use, faster to launch, a lot nicer than the settings app itself. But that's just me. I am still a Windows 7 veteran. But that is pretty much it. That's all the customization you can do with the start menu. So it's just a quick summary. I apologize if I've gone through too quickly. You might want to watch again. But that pretty much covers it. I am a little bit rusty with my screencast, so I'm expecting to bring more in the very near future. So if you like this video, please feel free to click all the buttons below the videos because they do good things. And I will see you guys in the next one.